<laughs> Robin. Uh, Colin Quinn is here in studio. Good morning, guys. Hi, Carl. Hi. Look at that mic. is like a limp yeah, in well, front of you. Yeah, fix the mic. Why well, help, help Colin. Exactly. And then you could pull it closer yeah. to his face table, instead you know. of... Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Sitting back in the middle of the room. <laughs> What are you doing, uh, Carl? I, I hear you're uh, hitting up Rachel Ray after this. Yeah, I gotta head over to Rachel Ray after this. And yeah, do some promos and promoting, stuff. promoting yeah, the new, promoting the new the uh, constitutional, the new. Yes, yes. Now you've got a whole new Smiley up, whole new uh, gig going for yourself. Yeah. And what's this one? Um, based this one's on? the one that based on what you saw, Anthony, yes, early on. I did. I saw Anthony it over there. came early, oh, no, a, almost a year ago. Yeah. Wow, that, that was that show. long ago. Yeah. Holy fuck. Took you that long to put a Constitution show together? I would have had this together two, three weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very funny. I uh, nice. And that was early on. You'll like it now. Yeah. Where can I see this, Carl? Oh, the Barrow Street Theater. Yeah. Theater. Yes. You spelled, they spelled it wrong. They spelled it T-R-E, uh, Barrow Street Theater with T R E at the end dot com. <laughs> oh, if you no, want I think you spell it both ways. Oh, all right. Maybe they, that's like the English spelling or something. Yeah, tree. Yeah. It's only a block around for the corner from the cellar. I'm going head to head with the cellar. I oh, told you that the other night, Jimmy. Yeah, I know. Taking down the cellar. Yep. It's been empty every night. <laughs> <laughs> I performed to two people and they're both waitresses. I'm like, where is everybody? They're like, you know what's right going around on around the corner, corner, don't you? Yeah. Call. Yeah. So what Call are you going to do with this? Then. You're doing five weeks of previews at the Barrow, uh, the Barrow Street Theater. Then where do you go after that? Are you going to Broadway with it? Um, I don't think so. Oh. No. On the road? I don't know yet. It's really mm. all kind of happened very suddenly. So it's been a whirlwind. Are we getting, <laughs> a, uh, <laughs> are we getting another multimedia experience? Uh, well, it's kind of hard to say. It's in preview, so it's kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. You don't know much about this, Carl. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I didn't expect these kinds of questions. You guys are really, oh, we are really. You guys are really zeroing in, and it's starting to annoy me. We are <laughs> drilling you I thought I'd you, come yeah. in, you trash unconstitutional, you trash the fact that it was going on Rachel Ray, and then no. we move on to trashing other people that we know. Well, we, well, I think we hit a couple of hot topics on the news. <laughs> Do a little said. veiled racist to tra trashing. <laughs> veiled? <and> then, <laughs> no, exactly. I, the hate, I, talking about. I hate how veiled <laughs> racism sounds. It's phony. Yeah. Like being authentic. I like saying the word veiled. I yes, like that is veiled. true. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, guys. of course. Uh, we're very happy for you, Colin. And, uh, how come no Wednesday shows? Now we'll get to it. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Than the Wednesday. Is that like the theater day off or something? No, that's uh, no, what you do too. I don't know. It's, it's actually not a bad question. That's what's so annoying about it. <laughs> You're supposed to do matinees on Wednesday. Oh, that's right, 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 right. No, right, not right. in the village. Oh. I'm doing matinees on the weekend if oh. you'd like to stop by. Oh, okay. Oh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I mean, it's convenient. You're in the village. You're out having a nice afternoon with the family, walking around, doing a little shopping. And you're like, oh, let's catch a show before we head back to the path train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that like, that just takes up your whole life for the entire length of uh, when you do this, doesn't it? Yeah. It's all encompassing. Yes, it is. No time for yourself. There's no me time. You're no right about you that. No you time. <laughs> and guess what? I don't want it right now anyway with this weather we've been having. Oh, let's <laughs> talk about the really weather. Is <laughs> that, what a great segue. <laughs> and I tell you, this is what... <laughs> it's supposed to be April showers. Not hey, major. Right. Gonna, yeah, it's like God pissing on you, right, Carl? Right. Oh, well. Ugh, I guess that's one way of looking at it. Fuck. Chipper. I don't like these uh, late uh, to arrive springs and summers. It uh, makes the summer go by too fast. Oh, no, he's then, serious. That's what's scary. By the time. <laughs> Shut up, Anthony. By the time it gets nice, it's uh, already almost September. And you know, somehow the weather knows when Labor Day is, because right after that, the temperature plummets. He's got a point. I do have a point. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have opened the pool, so that's like the official start of summer, but I haven't even been able to use it because it's been too uh, a little too chilly. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Big yeah. Big bashes. Although I'm kind of glad, I, I'm very pensive about um, uh, the, the summer, this summer, the, getting the pool open, because... That's the real true test of whether I can uphold this um, little dry streak I'm on. Oh. You know, you know very, I made it through, you know, my birthday weekend, nice. things like that, parties, you know, stuff like that. 
Uh, but boy, when the the pool is open, uh, it's hot out. You're out this summer. Oh, it could be a little difficult. Yeah, you have iced tea. It's fine. Yeah. Well, hey, this is great iced tea. <laughs> 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 Uh, you think Jim's going to display his new beach body at your pool? I <laughs> hope so. I've been over there every weekend just standing there looking at the tarp on top of it with no shirt on. <laughs> Jim's going to get all inked up before the thing. Yes. Yeah, like six tattoos. Hi, girls. Oh, but Jim, have you ever thought of that? Maybe? Yeah, fuck yeah. I want to get Zappa lives. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's a good one. <laughs> you, uh, have you, you ever thought of that? You have 70 Sam on your ankle. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Doesn't that mean gay? No, what? Yosemite Sam on your ankle? No, I thought, like, uh, was it Yosemite Sam? Or what What cartoon character represented, hi, I'm gay? Oh, I think boy. it's... Sweetie I, Bird? Well, yeah, well, depends on where you have it. On the head of your cock. <laughs> That's, I don't know. A carry, cartoon character, gay tattoo. Okay. What is it? Mm. Trav? I'm looking. Travis? I thought it was... <laughs> maybe someone knows. So the same Porky Pig. So why do you want to do this, Travis? Pepe Le Pew, Woody Woodpecker? No. I don't know. I can't sleep nights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, so yeah, cares? no. I have no, no tattoo. No tattoo. No, no inclination. You haven't even ever. thought about no what way. if your body gets in a fucking nice shape? I mean, what if? When it does. Oh, oh, well, when it When it does. Yeah, yeah. When I'm totally buff, I will not I can't be wait to have tattoos. Jimmy over in the uh, jacuzzi, though. It's always a fun, fun evening. Yeah. When Jimmy comes over. And uh, hops in the jacuzzi and then yells at me because it's not warm enough for him. Oh, it, the temperature of the jacuzzi fluctuates. A, lu a lukewarm jacuzzi is is it's better you're better off in a fire hydrant. Than it it, is, it yeah. is terrible. If you're gonna do it, do it, Anthony. It's upsetting. <laughs> I know. Anthony's no, saying, I finally figured it all out. What was it's wrong good. with it? Uh, the heater. I didn't have the settings right on the fucking heater. But now it's fucking, it's perfect. But again, it, it's going to be hard to not uh, imbibe in the uh, vodka, the vodka uh, cranberry How uh, little ice drink. Like that? Oh a my God, it's probably been a month. What's that? A month of not drinking. Oh my God, I just pulled a chip. What's that? Very hard. <laughs> what's, what's that? It's been a month. It's, it's great. difficult. It's not. I, well, sometimes it's difficult. Right now, I could get away with natural. How do you feel in the morning when you wake up? Oh, Abby? it's a wonderful new experience for me, hey. Carl. I'll tell you, that morning when you wake up and uh, it's not a pounding headache, uh, don't feel queasy. Nobody's mad. You don't know what you said the night before. Right. No. I'm not driving in. Still, perhaps if I get pulled over, there might be a problem right. kind of a thing. Oh, wow. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's not a bad drunk. He's not a violent drunk. Or he's no, just I'm the most fun drunk ever. Slightly repetitive. Yeah, well, well that's... The important yeah. thing is you're doing it on your own with your, your own willpower. Anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you even have a jacuzzi. That's such a Long Island move to get that jacuzzi. You know, when I was 19, yes. my friend hooked me up with this girl. She had a TR7. She was very, very oh. pretty. And she had a TR7. You know, I didn't have a car. I was like, oh, my God. She was like a... Yeah, she was rich. She lived in Lloyd Harbor. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Nice. Money. Nobody even knows where that is in Long Island. Billy Joel lived there. Ah, exactly. Everyone knows that. And we actually fooled around in her family's jacuzzi. Wow. And uh, and then I like was a drunken idiot. Like I just abused her afterwards and walked away. You know, just it's like an her. 80s I party movie. Her like yeah. And then my, I saw my friend. Like I just was like, hey, get out of here. Meanwhile, she was like the best thing What's that could have happened with in my you? life. And then my friend, I just go up to him and go, hey, man. And the next time I saw him, I'm like, sorry. And he just walked away and would never talk to me again as long as I lived. He never spoke to you? Just because, not even out of feelings for the girl, just out of how could you blow you the most amazing up. shot I gave you. You fucked it up, yeah. yeah. Was she pretty? Oh, really pretty. You fuck her? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it was the 80s, of course. That's what people did. Yeah, that's it wasn't it. like that then, Jimmy. You banged her in the jacuzzi or no? No, I would never do that. That's grotesque. I couldn't. I wouldn't. I don't like jacuzzi water on my dick. Who wants any water on their cock? I can't keep a fucking rod in the pool. You got to get out of. You well, got to. You got to kind of hang out. It's good if they're bent over the the edge of the jacuzzi. Oh, geez, this conversation is getting crazy. Yeah, it's getting a little blue. Yeah, this is what we call morning edge. Yeah. <laughs> we're changing the name of the show to the morning edge. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, we're bringing it edgy. Pools are not really too conducive to uh, sex. No. Like, it sounds like a good idea. It plays well in movies, but the uh, truth of the matter is, uh, the, the lubricant gets all fucked up. It, you know, pool you put water. lubricant in the pool? I'm not coming no, to the No, no, I'm talking about natural. Oh, natural habits. lubricant. <laughs> natural <laughs> lubricant. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it is when it gets all sloppy down there. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but this won't be like this on Rachel Ray. <laughs> oh, you better believe oh, it. Oh, I want to talk about that.
Yeah. She's very really sexy, actually. I only yeah. met her you once. Like her? I was really sexually attracted to her. Yeah. I could not believe how sexy her vibe was. She's got kind of a motherly thing. Dude, right she's going. fucking... Yeah. She's probably such a dirty bang. She's you, know wow. Veronica Mo- you know Veronica Mosey? Yeah. Mm. She's funny. So she goes uh, one time... Yeah, Rachel Ray, she goes... She, she, of course, like any good comedian, hates everything she's talking about. She goes, <laughs> Rachel Ray, she goes, she's the kind of girl who looks like she just banged the whole frat, and now she's cooking breakfast for them the next morning. <laughs> He's just acting it out. <laughs> wow, you know what? Those girls never got respect, even for cooking. If they would bang a bunch of guys, and then they would be nice enough to like want to do something. Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. Right, in this world. right. Yeah, I, I do the remember one, the ideal person, and everyone's like, oh, "Yeah, we right." I do recall a uh, a girl up in, um, I believe we were in Suni King... Oneonta. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> You're close because it was uh, it was Kingston, New York. Oh yeah, we I know were, Kingston. We were yeah. playing the wonderful Augie's Checkered Flag Lounge. Oh, Wait, where's Kingston? And How far is it? Kingston's uh, oh, two yeah, hours. Yeah, a couple hours. As the crow flies. It's nothing. <laughs> yes, we were playing Great the one shot right up 17. Augie's Checkered Flag uh, yeah. Lounge. We were staying at the uh, Cost- Costello Motor Court, which was no, nearby. No pool, of course. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> no pool, no. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we wound up bringing a couple of girls home. Right. Uh, back, well, about, back to Costello. And, uh, of course, you know, what transpired. <laughs> oh, boy. Fun and shenanigans. And hey, don't leave that part out. I know. Oh, boy. Uh, well, she decided the next morning, she, was getting, she got up early, and she wound up getting, like, everybody some egg sandwiches. From nice. the deli. A nice girl. And brought it back. And she was like, well, I got to go, but here you go. Thanks, God. She, we just took them all and, like, threw them around the hotel room, smashed them all the wall, laughed that it's stuck on the wall and stuff. Because, like, why would I eat that fucking whore's sandwich? Fuck her. And it's like, and everybody, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you just, what a bunch of assholes. Right. you hungry? <laughs> of course you're hungry, but you're not going to eat some slut's fucking egg. Would she rub it on a fucking pussy? You know? This is fucking, you don't do that. You're just you're such an asshole Did you ever see her age. again? No. <laughs> Did you ever see her again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that... And that girl is my wife. <laughs> you, we went into a year later. <laughs> yes, how was that sandwich? Yes. Yeah. Because I'd like to apologize to you. Yes. What we, happened to the egg whore? Throw her out the egg sandwich slut. The general double standard in our <laughs> sexual society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys are stupid in front of other their friends, you know. I'm sure if it was just a one-on-one experience, you'd be like, thank you so much, yeah. you're so sweet. Right. Yeah, because, but, you know, one other guy in the room, and you got to act like, so, you know. Like the Castro brothers. <clears throat> right, <laughs> like the Castro brothers. Yeah, we were just talking about that before. You, 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 why, how are they acting like those brothers didn't know what was going on? They had to. I don't know, Stop. man. They just... How are Puerto Rican brothers? They're tight, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the girls said that they had never seen them there. They did. The girls, really? They, that's no, the, the girls didn't too. see anybody. How they, about the cops? Just... How about the cops walking into a house that literally looked like uh, Silence of the Lambs? Just yeah. upstairs, and they're like, okay, what's in the basement? Ah, oh, the boiler. You don't want to see it. Oh, man, I'll see Yeah, it. all right, fuck it. Yeah. Well, I got a card right here. Miss <laughs> Littman. Miss Littman. <laughs> Unbelievable. They walk in the... Remember? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Were they in the house at all? <laughs> the cops? Yeah, they were called like 20 times to they the house go in, over they 10 years. They did. They went in a couple of times. Yeah. I wrote a report on the internet when oh. said they went in a couple of times. <laughs> oh. It's got to be authentic. Yeah, they, you know. You should have heard some of the comments. They were teed off at the... Were they? Oh. Teed off, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how they w- walked in there and, we, you know, just got disturbance calls. And I guess somebody called because... Uh, a, a girl holding a child knocked on a window once, and, right. and the cops said, "Oh, it was a prank." Right. You know all this shit. Somebody else had a leash and a chain in the yard. Yeah, this naked in the that. yard. Well, it's... Chain. But then they came back. But in that neighborhood too, you really <sighs> fucking, first of all, the cops did a lousy job. But you know how many yeah. fucking dumb calls they probably get in the neighborhood every day. Yeah, but if this is the neighborhood that fucking three girls disappeared from, perhaps. Right. Well, it wasn't from the know, neighborhood. Be a little more attentive. Yeah, it was like five miles away. Yeah, it wasn't uh, all that far. You should know, Jimmy. You're the king of Cleveland. Yeah. Cleveland really does. Cleveland does adore me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I liked going to Cleveland uh, for the gigs. Yeah. The city itself leaves a little... And the women. I do like the women in Cleveland. Oh, yeah. lovely. They're good girls. Boston girls, too. Philly girls can fucking go jump in the lake. Whoa! You don't like the Philly girl? No. They can kick rocks, in your opinion. Yeah, they really can. Yeah, yeah. Fucking beat it. 
<laughs> fucking lead me on and give Why? me nothing. Oh, they're the worst cock teasers alive. But Jim, I almost feel like you're taking one example isolated over the past 15 years, and she represents all Philly girls. All I, Philly I, girls I have yeah. about 1,600 names I can give you. Of fucking, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on over there? What's going on? Hey, what's going hey, on? You want some water? Loud. <laughs> yeah. Jim went to blow job. Yeah, you want some water? <laughs> blow job. You want a blow job? I ain't I'm not you freaking one. blowing you. Uh, oh, they're all full of shit. Anywhere from wow. Philly to D.C., they're just fucking phony. Yeah. Oh, they never gotten anything sick. good in, like, Nothing. D.C. or anything? Promises, this is, this promises, is, and bullshit. This is like the monologue, in the, the internal monologue of one of those serial killer truckers. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere from Philly to D.C. and the cops start to notice the geographical profiling. <laughs> they're like, hey, right off 95 between that. Philly and D.C. there's been yeah. five murders. Yeah, exactly. They've nicknamed it the Promises. Death strip. Promises. Yeah, with their yeah. tongues cut out, you know, so they can never make another <laughs> False promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, promises, promises. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's the Jimmy's worst. Uh, strawberries and oh my god, he eats. He eats like he's in fucking Rome. Right. He needs like, you know, the, he's like a, he's like he's like one of those baby king. You know, like the third. Yeah, like the baby king of Nero or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's very healthy though. I, I heard his advice show yesterday. Um, I was, uh, was driving he saying, home. Guys, without diet, it's all BS. That's exactly what he did say. So annoying. Someone, Someone was uh, calling know, saying that they uh, they do exercise and whatnot, but, uh, but they're not losing as much weight as they wanted to. And Jimmy said, "It's not about the exercise; it's about the diet." That's most of it. Ooh, yeah, it really is a that's a breakthrough thought. Anyway, but it really well, is. Well, you know, Carl, I didn't have to be original. I just had to give this young man some <laughs> advice. He said to me, "How do you, I want to know how you do it? How do you do it, Roop?" <laughs> you know, Jerry, a lot of people say, well, you're living proof that you're human. In fact, more so. More so. You know, well, you know, you're famous. I guess you just got to, you know, deal with it. Oh, oh I just love that. That's okay, because I'm going to be twice as famous as you. Good, you know, twice as many. How funny was, how funny was Jerry Langford now? Oh, I loved Langford. Irritated. Oh, uh, so was Hitler. I'd like to look at all those movies of guys that like really did, because I heard he was like, what am I doing this movie? What is this not? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same with like Burt Reynolds with Boogie Nights. Oh, like he was yeah, a Burt Reynolds agent. with Boogie Nights. Yeah, he fired his agent and then he ended up winning the Academy. Like, all like the there. guys who are older that didn't know what they were doing, but they went in and were brilliant. Right. Yeah, yeah, Burt Reynolds, uh, Boogie Nights, well, I, I'd rather, you know, how about we do another Smoke in the Bandit? Right. That went good. How about another Hooper? I guess it just goes to show that you can be a consummate professional. That's how good those guys are. Even yes. though they're resisting, they show up on the set every day and do their job. Well, we had Mark it. Wahlberg in, and he said that Burt Reynolds started doing the dialogue with an Irish accent the first day because he thought oh. it was supposed to be the guy with an Irish accent. What? And they had to tell him. Did like, they just tell him, look, Burt? Yeah. What are you this doing? Is not what you're supposed to be doing. Stop it. Ugh. Fucking do the, do the, read the lines like they're supposed to be read. Yeah. With this big toupee. <laughs> <laughs> he did have a giant to pay that. You know, one. you twittered something about you and Conan having a beef, and it was this Ooh, fighting Irish no. family. Oh yeah, the uh, the Joyces and the. Man. And I wound mm -hmm. up watching all these documentaries on these bare knuckle brawlers yes. in Ireland. They're pretty fucking interesting, man. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. All they do is fight over yeah. some slight oh, Irish. Well, they, no, they're tinkers. They like gypsies. And you read the comments in the court because it was like, I meet you in Longford. Now you never showed up, Joe. Have it. <laughs> and they just keep arguing, and then they beat the balls off each other. Really? But then the comments, you can tell they're the most hated people in Ireland because <laughs> underneath it's like, they're useless cunts. Hitler was right about killing gypsies. You should kill every fucking one. They do nothing. They add nothing to society. And it's like all these great comments, but just, just kind of like Irish written so well, <laughs> but just like a combination of cursing and like literary. Just like <laughs> Just trash these people. Really? So, everybody hates their guts. So they hate each other, and everybody hates them. Everybody hates them. Why do they, like, why are they doing this? No, they've been doing that for hundreds of years to settle inter-family beefs. Hundreds they have two guys, years. you know, the Joyce, McQuinn, McDonough, and there's all these different families, and they just have these, they have these big beefs, and some of them are really funny guys, you know, but you can barely understand them. What is that about why the they Irish? Hate each other? And a lot of them, honestly, Amazing. a lot of them, and I'm not just saying this to to be inclusive to our uh, the fill in for Opie today, but oh. a lot of them do look like Scorch. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Do they? Yeah, facially. They have a face. <laughs> look, come on. There's just something about them. Yeah, this one yeah. guy was talking about how he keeps his fucking hands hard. He goes, I soaked him in Joe Joyce, yeah. Joe Joy. I soaked him in petrol for twenty minutes a day. Yeah. He soaked his hands petrol. in gas <laughs> yeah. for twenty minutes a day. 
It's not even gas petrol. You know, it's like cheap Eastern European knockoff oh, shit. Oh, right. Probably. Yeah, very low octane. <laughs> very high in fucking additives. Uh, you know, That's a fight. His wife must have hated when his big fucking hard rock hands went into her pussy. Oh, just yeah. burns her <laughs> pussy? Yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't finger each other in Ireland. They just have regular sex. Oh, you think? Regular yes. missionary position to have kids. Yeah, and I remember a friend of mine as a little kid went to Ireland, and he was like 10 to visit his relatives, and he came back and told us how he had to have these fights with all these little kids from this trailer, and he started describing tinkers, but we didn't know what it was, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. And he, so they, it's like one of those things, that even, they, they're like, hey, Yank, come on, Yank, and they made him fight every day. And it was the they same made, thing. What a vacation. You're just getting <laughs> fucking the shit beat out of you. That sounds horrible. He was a wild kid anyway, so I'm Was sure he? Oh, okay. It does seem like if you go to Ireland, you're probably going to get in a fight. <laughs> like those, they like to mix it well, up. Well, if you're in the bar the whole time, obviously yeah. something's going to happen. Like the Donnybrook. I always see I, fuck, every footage of, piece of footage of Ireland, I see it's fucking dismal out. The weather is cloudy. I yeah. have zero desire to go Like to today. Yeah, here in our own home. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I, I'm surprised that Jim is like a sunny day enthusiast. He's like, I yeah. always go to that dismal weather. <laughs> you, you, Jim is. He's he fucking, smiles yeah. when he sees sunshine. He's a goddamn. I didn't realize he was a fucking Brazilian supermodel that liked to lay in South Beach all day. I get the doldrums from some of that weather. What the fuck is this? Well, you, I never, don't, you don't go out before it's dark, do you? Like no, I'm a respectable comedian. I just don't <laughs> care for uh, I just don't care for overcast weather. It really dampens my mood. I don't blame you. Yeah, people uh, they put those those fucking lights on themselves. They look into a fucking light all winter long because they don't they get seasonal depression. I have so oh, yes. so, so they have to look into a a light. I think yes. uh, I think our own Troy Kwan right there. He has one. Yeah, and and it's so it's you. True. Your body and your eyes can see some type of what would be sunlight simulated. I'm worried sunlight. about all the other shit. You worried about this? What about pesticides? <laughs> 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 I'm pouring water on my strawberries. Pour this water all over your strawberries. Only because I knew if I reached for your coffee, which I wanted to do, and smashed it, uh, <laughs> you would have caught me too early. Yes. <laughs> I had to go with what was available to my hands. <laughs> now Jim's moving his, he's moving his items away from me. Well, I told you, this creep started it. Many years ago, I was trying to have a lovely cup of tea at the uh -huh. comedy cellar, as I like to have. And so I go upstairs, and I was like, oh, they gave me mint tea. Instead of regular tea, you know, I fucking I don't like mint tea. Mm. Turns to turns out to be they gave me regular tea. It was not the staff swallowed. I want to emphasize that. Oh, no. <laughs> this asshole was chewing gum and stuck his gum in my fucking tea. <laughs> I was drinking his goddamn gum, his gum juice. <laughs> Holy shit! You thought it was mint tea? I was like, oh, mint tea, I don't like this. Minty he's fresh. sitting there smirking at the table. So ever since then, any time he's at twice. the table... I got you twice. Yeah. And that was ten years ago. Yeah, and ever since then, literally, if he's at the table, even all these years later, you think somebody was a mature adult, I carry my tea, any drinking, any beverage I have, I carry them down with Well, me. you should, go yes. He's going to fucking pervert it in some fashion. Wow. <laughs> Were you grossed out with the thought? You, you know. No, oh, just one of those things. It was just infuriating. It's in his mouth, and you know. No, Anthony, you know what it been. is. You just we, you like certain comforts. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all you're saying. <laughs> what can we look uh, forward to in uh, your? Uh, well, you're the only one who really understands what I'm trying to achieve. I love it. Oh, I know what you're trying to achieve. I love no, you don't, it. Jim. Maybe you met me. What's that? Maybe you meant that I'm the only one who understands. No, I meant Anthony's oh, the only one. Horse. What do you think he's trying to achieve? Let's take, let's do a test. What is he what trying do you think to achieve? Is trying to achieve. He is trying to uh, rid the world of this ignorance and revisionist history that is going on, and using humor to get these points across instead of the doldrums of C-SPAN. Thanks. Thank you. Of course. What do you think, Jim? It's very interesting. He's trying to do some fucking fun jokes. Oh, That's I told you about that idiot <laughs> voice that time. Back in the early 90s. I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again until the whole country understands. Voice had just hated me because all these guys knew I was funny and Voice didn't get. And he would get. So one time I was on stage at Caroline's and I did something, but it was like almost like I go, this is like a poem, but it was like a comedy, but it wasn't a poem. You know, it was jokes. Yeah. But it didn't work. He comes up right after me. This is 1994. And goes, I, I don't. We, we didn't know each other barely. Just a little bit. Hey, I don't do poems. I do fucking jokes, folks. Oh, like, oh. shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just sold me out. Ew, did you fucking the... hate him right then and there? I was like, who is this goddamn this asshole? fucking mullet that bastard? <laughs> no, rat tail. He had a rat tail. Yeah, rat tail. Well, rat tails were big in 94. Yeah.
Well, maybe not big, but they were. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Why would he say that? Son of a Especially bitch. not knowing you. A yeah, prick. I mean, he knew me a little bit, but, you know. Not that much, not that be, well. Just because he was feeling his oats, he was in Carolines. Yeah. Lines, you know, it was like a, it was like a, Voss is the one that broke it open in many ways for Norton and the rest of the Jersey Hacks to actually work in New York. So Jersey in, Hacks. In that sense, yeah, you so have to give compliment. credit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, bring in the Jersey Hacks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think Voss got there first. We went around the same time, though. Yeah. No, I remember it very vividly. It was Voss. Voss oh, Lewis yeah. loved Voss. Uh, he did. Voss probably got you in. But I used to go to the comic strip, and me, you, Franchese, Florentine, and Eric McMahon would go out right. um, to eat at that place right. across the street from the strip. Mm. So that's fucking like 1995. Jeez. A million years ago, right? A million yeah. years ago, guys. You used to call me Naughty Norton. Oh. Yeah. Hello, Naughty. Yeah. That was you and Frank. You were a naughty. I was, I was a naughty boy. He I was, was a naughty. naughty boy. Yeah. And you lived with uh, Jim at the time? I think that's before I lived with Jim. I, I spoke to battling Bob Lee. I, I'm walking on 46. Here's, here's the problem with the world. I'm walking on 46th Street yesterday, going to an <coughs> important publicity lunch at Joe Allen, oh. top trendy restaurant with the AP. And I pass this theater on 46th Street. You know, they've got a bunch of shows over there like... And I look, and it says, appearing only tonight in one of the theater shows, Bob, the Reverend Bob Levy. Wow. So I took a picture and sent it out so the public knew what was going on on, on the Broadway. Like, on the, for one night <laughs> on only. On the Great White Way. Bob Levy. It's yeah. like a Broadway name now. Yeah, right. Wow. For one night only. Uh, Carl, I got to ask you, um, what do you, what do you, what's your take on uh, uh, the Constitution in this day and age? A lot of people saying... Uh, it's being trotted upon. Well, that's that's. I really, I honestly, I I feel like uh, I feel like we should be having more constitutional conventions so that yeah. people can really discuss this kind of thing. I feel yeah. like it's not a serious discussion it's when not. it's just everybody putting there. Everybody's just saying this, 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 picking and choosing. Everyone's like, yes. you need to have a serious conversation. And they're, about, well, let's face it, the only thing you care about is the gut, is the second. Amendment. Well, I kind of like the first too. No, you care about the second. I like the second, but why um, do you care about the first? Well, that's what I do. It's kind but of I'm my saying job. I'm who's trotting on the First Amendment. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, that uh, uh, trot on my First Amendment rights, uh, especially um, political correctness, more so than oh, infuriating. Anything. To 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 you not have the, the show, ability. Yeah, I, I, I will absolutely it. to not have the ability to address, especially racial issues in this country, without that's having the scarlet R put on your chest, is uh, a fucking embarrassment. I'm tired of black people being called racist for addressing white issues. I agree with you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unbelievable! It really is infuriating. I would really like to have more of a uh, freedom yes. to say things and have an open dialogue because nothing gets accomplished unless you can really hash it out like that. But they're so afraid this to just have an open discussion about uh, race in this yes. country. Well, that's actually addressed very deeply oh, okay. in the show. Good, I got it. It's almost see like it. you're quoting the show in many ways. Wow! Do you address the fact too? Wow. With the, uh, the I was other. actually going to use Scarlet R. I have it written down, but now Scarlet I'm afraid because R. He or not? Call. Because I feel like I the Scarlet Letter. Don't even feel. Instead no. of an A, it's an R. Don't you say. even feel that way. Yeah. You take it. Yeah, Hester be, uh, Prynne. Oh, <laughs> somebody's uh, doing a little reading on the old stairmaster. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you mention the fact that in the Constitution, yeah. everybody complains like like uh, when you mention the guns. Right. And you say something about, well, they, you know, when, when the Constitution was drafted, they didn't have fucking AR-15s or whatever it is they have. Exactly. Uh, it was a different time. Well, I certainly don't want to mention that because that would be, you know. And they say, well, different time. They still meant the same thing. But if you say, how can you listen to people who wrote the Constitution because they had slaves and they're talking about freedom, these same people will go, ah, it was a different time. You have to allow that. Yeah, that's a good point. I um, uh, I see it as uh, there are certain things that um, you have to look at um, when when they were when they were keeping rights from people. That is what is uh, considered wrong. Right. When they're when they're uh, respecting rights because rights aren't given; they're just they're there. They're your God given rights, and when they're respecting those rights, that's a good thing. So with the Second Amendment. Uh, they're respecting your right to bear arms. As of uh, being slave owners, they are uh, taking away someone's rights. So you can make that distinction, Jim. They're not the same thing that you're really talking but about. But it's the overall point and the view <clears throat> of how we say that was the times. Well, so we throw the entire document away because they were slave owners? Is that... Uh 
Is that smart? I mean, you're strawberry. <laughs> He's got a very constitutional yes. mustache made out of a napkin, Carl. This you're looking very, very, <laughs> very, <laughs> I come on. very constitutional. The Constitution. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that's yeah. this little augie, this little whatever this was here, is exactly why the show now it's more important now than, than ever. ever. If you see and one when show I say now, this year, I only mean five weeks, right? Because despite Jim's plans for me to tour all over the goddamn country, right? He has you I'm everywhere. Sick of this thing, I've been doing it a year. <clears throat> right, five weeks, and I want to fucking shoot it, make some goddamn money, and fuck out. Well, I want to go see it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I have to com- I have to make one more comment about that, sure. because a lot of people do bring up the, well, it was muskets back then. Yeah. Yeah. They would never, you know, have it with assault rifles and whatnot. Do you think when they wrote the Second Amendment and uh, said you have the right to bear arms, uh, that they weren't talking about the absolute top-of-the-line weaponry of their day? The musket? They didn't say, well, you have the right to bear this. It's not as good as our amazing assault musket. But so as time went on, you, yeah. you got better weaponry. And during the course of their own lives, they saw weaponry advance uh, uh, leaps and bounds. You did, You thought they thought it was just going to stop right there? They knew it was going to advance. I, 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 first, I don't think they saw the degeneration, the, the way society would degenerate into school shootings. I don't believe they saw that coming. From what coming. they've seen but, all over the globe back but, then? But... Regardless of what they thought yeah. at that point, this is where we are now. Right. And we have to look at things and how they're affecting us now. And the point I'm making is simply people are, and this is all of us, are selective when they look at something like, well, that was the times. Like we say that at certain times mm-hmm. when it suits the argument. But to say that that was the times when they wrote about muskets, it's like, well, they meant it to continue. Well, then. Given that, given that that's what the times was, so we can move along. Well, that's anyway, what the times. Um, that's all he wants. <laughs> all, that really is all I want. Is that's that all one he point? wants? All he wants to do is go. Hey, you know what? That's an interesting right. point. And Jim, we can fucking move along. What an interesting point, and I I, I got to agree with you on that. This is not one. about. This is about states' rights versus federal rights. Thank this, you. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Yes. And the show covers it. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, good. I'm sitting here going, guys, just come to see the show. Then you can really make yes, your arguments. Yes. Yes. And you'll be yeah. informed. Oh, you'll be totally informed. Yeah. I, I don't like uh, New York state's rights. I don't like what they've done with the Second Amendment, as right. uh, far as that goes. But well overstepped their, their bounds, but right. it is their stupid right. It's their right. Well, it's well, state, it's the people well they're the, right. Yeah. The state's rights are limited by the Constitution. Right. So I think they're overstepping their boundaries, boundaries in, in some respects, as no, far as the Second Amendment goes. I really do. Second you mean... Uh, and, hey, Bloomberg. Yeah, and I think also that they're uh, they're putting legislation in place that does nothing. That whole that, that, when they said when Cuomo wrote into law that uh, you have to have a magazine with uh, seven rounds capacity, seven rounds, seven bullets. Mm-hmm. N- didn't he do enough research to know that they don't make seven round mags for? Uh, AR-15s and for a lot of handguns and stuff, that there's only a 5 and then a 10 round magazine. So then they're like, okay, we, we fucked that up. We didn't even know about magazines when we wrote a law, fucking law about it. But now we're allowed to use the 10 rounds. We'll leave you that. But you can only put in seven bullets. What is that doing to protect anybody? Because obviously, if somebody wants to do bodily harm to someone and adhere to the 10-round magazine, they're certainly not going to adhere to the seven-round limit in the 10-round magazine. Meanwhile, I'm there loading seven rounds into a 10-round mag because I want right. to you know, adhere to the rules. Oh, now I ho- the, yeah. Hopefully you're preparing lunch. <laughs> <laughs> But it really does uh, go because now I'm guaranteed to be outgunned in at least the uh, the number of, of rounds I have available now, to protect do you myself. Are you sure that muskets were the most powerful weapon back then? I was always wondering. I feel I like, would, I feel like it would have just said muskets because we're too lazy to, to Google it. Well, but. there there were there were cannons. No, but I mean you know, handguns. I, I think I think uh, hand yeah there were there were handguns. They were like um, a flintlock handguns, but you know nothing. That really overstepped the musket to the point where it's like, well, we certainly don't want people having that. What year was the Gatling gun invented? That was the 1800s, ah. early 1800s. Da, 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 da. Those are fun. Yeah, we'll take a break, and we got, oh, uh, of course, oh, uh, is Martha here or no? no yeah. Is Martha oh, here yet? Oh, okay. well, we got Alan Hunter and uh, Martha Quinn will be joining us. Uh, wait, Carl, wait, excuse the me, old, uh, take a break. Yeah. Yes. Is Jim intimately acquainted with Martha Quinn? Is Martha here? <laughs> no, I is just is Martha here? Stop. Stop. You don't know her. Call her Miss Quinn. Martha. She's in the bathroom. Oh, she's oh, in the bathroom. oh, man. 
A deuce or a... <laughs> staying alone? That's kind of hot, actually. Uh, yeah, we don't have wow. Uh, no, no, we'll, we'll do that. Wait, now let me ask you a question, because mm-hmm. this is a big question for me, and it caused uh-huh. a lot sure. of contention last time. Where the fuck do you guys expect me to sit when all these other people are right coming where in? you are. I'm leaving. No! Stay where you are. Don't leave, stay there. Every time I try to move to the other thing, and that caused a lot of problems last week, you guys were, oh, you were here with Opie, Bill Burr, and Mark Cuban. So don't move. You know, don't don't move. I don't want to be rude to the new guest. No, no, no I right want you to stay well, right there. Dumb, 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 I want you to stay right there. They Steve can sit over there. there. That's fine. fine. I like Colin this right there. Has Get this, up. This whole thing has a synergy to it. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, you you know these uh, lovely lads uh, and uh, ladies sure from MTV. Yeah. You have a, a common background here. A real knee slap is to tell. Yeah. All right. I'll tell you a good Martha Quinn one, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Mom, when she comes Wait, when she gets in? Okay, nice. Don't go anywhere. Rob, bit, rock, rock, bit, bit, rock, bit, 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 bit,